St. John chapter 16, the second half of verse 13. Jesus told the disciples, When the Spirit comes, who reveals the truth about God, He will lead you into all the truths. Today, the Christian Church celebrates Witch Sunday, the day of Pentecost. It is the tenth day after the ascension of our Lord, and the fiftieth day after Easter Day, the day of the resurrection of our Lord. Witch Sunday is a time when God sent His Holy Spirit upon the church, upon His church, assembled in the upper room at Jerusalem. Before the ascension, Jesus told His disciples that they should not leave Jerusalem until they were clothed with power from on high. So they remained and had the experience of the full outpouring of the Spirit. We must not think that the Holy Spirit came for the first time at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit always existed. God is eternally Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. At different times, men and women tapped it and experienced it in different ways. Which Sunday was a time when the community of God's people experienced to the full that power of the Holy Spirit which was always there. Our Lord referred to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of Truth and said that the work of the Spirit was to reveal the truth about God to succeeding generations of men. The revelation of the truth about God is a progressive and gradual process. All teaching and revelation must be adapted to a person's ability to, re to receive it. God's revelation to man is as progressive and gradual as when a teacher teaches a class, going step by step from the known to the unknown, from the simple to the complex. It is a developing revelation. There are certain consequences to this fact of revelation. It is the explanation that parts of the Old Testament literature which always worry us. At the stage of the Old Testament, that was all of God's truths that man could grasp. For example, in the Old Testament, there were many sections which called for the extinction of enemies, both man and beast, where the, where the cities were captured. The reason for this was that the people of Israel thought that they were the chosen people of God and must not risk the possibility of being contaminated or tainted with any heathen or law religion. Mm. Rather than doing that, they must totally destroy the enemy because they do not worship the true and living God. What revelation that they grasp was the purity of their religion must be at all costs be safeguarded. Their idea of the preservation of their religion was by destroying the, the heathen. At the coming of Jesus Christ, their minds were open to receive the revelation that the way to preserve the purity of their religion was to convert the heathen and to lead them to the knowledge of God. The people of the Old Testament had grasped only a part of the truth. Revelation is like that. God can and will only reveal as much as man can understand. The second consequence is that it is a proof that there is no end to God's revelation. One of the great mistakes of the fundamentalists of our time is to say that God's revelation is only through the Holy Scriptures. To accede to that 
is to say that God has ceased to speak or ceased to reveal himself since the last book of the Bible was written in about 120 AD, more than 2,000 years ago. We certainly cannot accept that. God's spirit is always active. God is always revealing himself. It is indeed true that God's supreme and unsurpassable revelation came in Jesus Christ. But as we always say and believe, Jesus is not just a figure in a book. He is a living person. And in and through him, God's revelation goes on. Through the church, God reveals himself and speaks. The church community is the extension of the body of Christ in the world. Every Christian person is therefore under obligation to be guided by the truth of the Holy Spirit so that in all utterances, by thought, word, or deed, in private or in public, he is given a further revelation of the power and love of God. God still leads us into a greater and greater realization of what Jesus stands for. God is not now silent. God is still revealing himself, his truths to men. God talks to us through the prophets of today, the, the theologians, those who develop theological thoughts and rationale. He still talks to us through our parents, through our spiritual counselors, through teachers, through friends, and through the changing scenes of life. God's truth is not understood because sometimes we blind our eyes and deaf our ears to his deeds and voice by the way we conduct ourselves, by our apathy to the worship of his name, by our casual and sparing support of the work and witness of the church, by the giving of our talents, time, and treasure. We need to avail ourselves to God and remain in the upper room of God's presence and be filled with that promised power from on high which will guide us and lead us into all the truths. Yeah. Mm -hmm.